some years ago, I asked the Lord this question. I said, Lord, what did you do when you separated female from male? Um, you said, uh, the scripture tells us in Genesis chapter 2, it is not good for man to be alone. Well, you and I both know that Adam was not lonely in as much as he had God, but man or Adam was all one, all one with respect to male and female being on the inside of him. We understand that that is absolutely appropriate because we know God is God the Father, but we also know him as El Shaddai. And if you've done any homework in the Bible, you know that El, Sha El Shaddai re re um, uh, um, is a word that means the many-breasted one, many-breasted one. And it means many-breasted one from the perspective of being there is an opportunity for everyone to draw nourishment as a mother. As a matter of fact, the scripture talks about that. And this is not that lesson. I'm just trying to give you the foundation for why we are here today. So when it talks to uh, uh, re regarding Adam, understand the foundation from which we're speaking. When we say Adam, uh, in the beginning, God created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day that they were created. And that they were uh, male and female. We recognize that from Genesis chapter 5 because it tells us in as much as that God took female out of him, but he kept the name Adam, which is mankind, with what we call male. And Adam named Eve himself uh, because she was the mother of all of the living. And so we come from that principle. And let, yesterday we talked about it in a little more depth than we did in the days previous, that God was setting the pattern for what he would do in making Eve. This is necessary, folks. I know this is review, but this is necessary. But he started the pattern by taking out the rib of mankind, which would now be called Adam, male, and forming the woman from that rib. And so he took something out. He didn't, as we said, we did, he didn't blink like I dream of genie and just create a duplicate. He took out something and he put it over here. And that was the beginning of the process that would set the tone for the rest of the process. Everything that was necessary to make a help meet for him, someone suitable for man, he had to take it out of this vessel and put it in this vessel. Everything from organs, everything, 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 everything. Her consciousness took some consciousness out of this one and put it over here. Uh, the brain. Uh, women are just as capable because they were taken out of men. And so um, it's interesting that God could take capacity out of one and put equal capacity in the other. Everybody knows that women have the same intellectual capacity as a man. It just is. Um, and so we, we understand that as a baseline. However, it seems like when he took muscle out, he took a softer variety out of the man and placed it in the way. And I know women go to the gym and they, 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 they can get tough these days. I got that. But for the most part, for the most part, a woman is much softer than a man. Let all the men say amen. And all, <laughs> okay, I ask if everybody was grown. Okay. <laughs> so, amen. Um, and so what we have is a, a new awareness that a man and a woman are not simply physiologically and biologically different, but the same. They are not. They are physiologically different, and they are mentally different, and they are emotionally different, and it's those differences that cause us to be suitable for one another, but also causes some of the challenges that we have with one another. I was going to say let the church say amen, but nobody wants to say amen right there. Amen. So what are we doing here? So I began to describe what God did um, beyond the obvious when he took 
what was necessary out of the original formation of mankind and he put it in a woman and that she would be a perfect one suitable you know if I get a new suit it's tailor-made and so that woman that came to Adam she was tailor-made suitable help meet m-e-e-t suitable she was suitable for him and so is your wife for you buddy amen amen and for the women you are suitable for someone you just got to find the fit we'll talk about that a little bit later um, and so that was the the nutshell of it we went just a little bit further and I'm gonna touch on that and then I'm gonna describe it quite a bit more in uh, our first session and that is that God put some characteristics in the man and some characteristics in a woman that were in the full expression of mankind before woe man was taken out of him but now they each have a element that the other does not have because it was taken out and put over here and, and over here didn't have they eat there are elements that he doesn't have anymore and there are elements that she has that that he doesn't they they're not the same and so we use the basic illustration that uh, men have blinder focus it's like the horse race and he has the blinders on and he is single focused and that's very important for you to understand because this is the foundation for uh, what God began to show me with regard to men and women and we will see it all through the Bible and the woman she there, there's well she's not single focused though she can be as bright and astute as anyone else she is what we have called um, she is she has dispersed awareness dispersed awareness meaning that she can have this multitasking capacity that she never learned but it was a part of her her brain has been designed her mind has been designed where she can pick up details around the room and she didn't intend to do it it was part of how she was designed so she doesn't miss much and we have understood that I have not heard anybody ever say that dad has eyes in the back of his head I've heard you can't get anything over on him I, I've heard some other things but I've never heard that dad has eyes in the back of his head. I have heard, however, that mom has eyes in the back of her, of her head. Or if she's not, if she doesn't have children, that but she seems to, man, I she seems, to, and this is the man talking, she seems to know everything. Then if you ever want to find your keys, and we went through that, that you ask a woman, have you seen my keys? Well, yeah. Well, you know, he walked through the same room, but because of how they have been designed, they see the room differently now that's all we're going to do with that because I could go and teach that again and again and again but for those who have just gotten into the room today that element is going to be essential for you as we talk about not just the differences between men and women but how they affect our everyday lives how those differences design differences I, I say we're we're not wired the same and thank God for that we're not wired the same. I, I, I love, I love uh, when the illustration comes and the husband and wife, they embrace one another. And the whole heartbeat is as they embrace one another, they are looking over one another's shoulder so that nobody can sneak up. And they are using their full awareness to protect uh, their mate. Uh, say amen, somebody. Uh, that's an awesome thing. That's an awesome thing. So as we go through uh, today, we're going to see how the lack of awareness of how we have been created causes challenges. But we're also going to see that when we embrace what God has given us, how it makes us more powerful. That's a good place to say amen. Um, what is it? Um, um, one can put a thousand to flight, but two can put 10,000 a flight. Uh, say amen, somebody. I want to, um, oh man, so much to cover. We, um, we ended last night on a note we were talking about 
a good relationship or a good marriage begins with you. Now, let me say this again, foundational, and then I'm off to the races. Um, that is that because we have people who are not just married, I'm going to at times use illustrations or refer to how this applies to someone who is single or someone who is even looking to find someone suitable. And so, but there's something here for you. <laughs> Amen. There's something here for you. We said that a good marriage begins with you. I could say that a good courtship begins with you. Um, even when you uh, think that you are on your own and um, we, we've not yet sent, sent, We've not yet sent the bullets that we promise. Uh, this has been a whirlwind of a day. Amen. Not bad, just whirlwind. And so we didn't get to some things. But um, let, let's hit the high points and then we'll uh, get to where we are, uh, where we need to be. We said that there is in a relationship the power of one, the power of one. And that is that each person, as it's important that they, they play their role in the partnership. That's why the enemy has come and he's tried to affect your definition. Oh, amen. I, that's some, most of the things that we're talking about uh, on the national platform, uh, we recognize that the enemy is trying to redefine life, redefine male and female, redefine uh, all of these things. And if he's successful in redefining it, then none of the other None of the other phrases work. If every time I come up to you and I am working from a new dictionary and the old words have new meanings, then you and I are, are, are never going to be, communica be able to communicate. Kind of like that uh, in the neighborhood that I grew up in. I remember when, uh, when something cool meant that it was good. We say, oh, that's cool. That, though, Come on, 60s. Cool. It was cool right then, you know. And then we said, oh, man, that's bad. But bad didn't mean bad anymore. Bad meant good. And so it was, it was, a, it was a system designed to keep one generation off balance with what the other generation was saying. It was just kind of, kind of interesting. Uh, the other day I was... Uh, uh, teaching in a Zoom environment, but I was the guest speaker, and someone said, uh, made a phrase, and I, I've, and I had to ask the host, what does that mean? Because it was an expression that I had never heard before, but the generation that was being served by that ministry, for the most part, were using words in a way that I had no idea. I did not feel old. Say amen, somebody. I didn't feel old. I just felt excluded. <laughs> well, it was designed for that. So, amen. So, um, the power of one, a good marriage begins with you in creating an atmosphere where everyone uh, has a role and a responsibility. That's why the enemy's trying to shake it up and create new roles and new responsibility. Let me tell you what. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. And none of the scriptures have been given to compromise you or to put you in a box or to deny you your freedoms or what have you. Um, lack of revelation of the word of God has been on steroids. My goodness. And so what are we doing here? Uh, we're putting the principles back, but we're putting them back with another level of revelation. That's my goal. And so we talked about the power of one. Then we talked about the power to choose. I've got to, cho I can choose how I feel. Amen. I remember uh, years ago, um, um, we, we had a, uh, we, we lived uh, in Minneapolis. I'm not in Minneapolis right now, but I'm in the Twin Cities. But we lived in Minneapolis and I had one of those uh, homes where there was a drive up um, garage in the back and um, it was not attached to the house. And then um, I could also park in the garage on the drive up and I also could park in front of the house. And I had come home one evening and I parked in the back of the house and, um, and then I walked in so forth and so on. It came out the next morning, car's gone, car's gone. And then you know how, you know where you parked, right? I went out back and the car's not there. So then I said, maybe I parked in the front but I knew better, but got to check, right? And so I'll go around the house and look in front, 
Car's gone, right? Car's gone. So then I went into the house. And um, my son, uh, my oldest son, probably, I don't know, um, he was old enough to be up when I went off to work, um, but he um, could talk, kind of. I mean, he clear, but not, you know. He, and um, uh, my wife asked me, um, what, what do you, why are you back in the house? And she, I said, well, looks like somebody took the car. And my son, yay tall. He looks at me and he says, someone took the car, Daddy? And, and, and he, he was ready to cry, okay? He, he was ready to cry. And I said, what are you crying? I mean, don't cry. You, 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 this is not a time to cry. This is a time to, we're going to call the police. We're going to do these kinds of things. Daddy's going to get down here. We didn't have two cars at the time. Daddy's going to go down here and catch the bus. Daddy's going to call the office and tell him he's running late. Dad, and, and so it's decision time. And it was like, he had to make a decision. You mean it's not time to cry? No, sir. No, sir. It's time to make a decision on what we're going to do. And so what I'm saying now is that we have had uh, the power to choose uh, in our relationships. We have many times said, I can't. And that is to absolve myself of all power. But what if I choose not to? I retain the power. And I'm not talking about semantics here. I'm just talking about um, reviewing. Okay, you can watch the whole lesson uh, when we post it. But so we have the power of one. We have the power to choose. Um, we have to become aware of ineffective communication patterns. Um, um, there are many. I don't want to teach tomorrow, uh, last night's lesson, but let me give you a couple um, some communication patterns are criticism, contempt, def defensiveness, stonewalling. Um, those are the kinds of things that destroy a marriage. But we get to choose. I can choose not to be um, condemning, criticizing all of the time, especially when I know what it does. And so, again, go back and get yesterday. So um, we need to develop a blame-free. I'm talking about bringing, building strong marriage. And I'm skipping through, folks. This might not sound important to you. Wait till you see le yesterday's lesson. This will make sense. Uh, Blame-free lifestyle. We need to uh, develop an encouraging atmosphere. Amen. I Listen, I can go a long way with an encourager. And um, we ask the question, and I think this is a big thing. What would it take for you to change? If there is a behavior that you find that is not building a relationship, but really building a kingdom, building your own kingdom, where everybody has to bow to the, your throne, well, that's very um, convenient for you, but everybody around you is miserable, and you can't figure it out. You say, if you would just do what I say, everything would be okay around here. Well, that might be all right for the children. But for your husband or your wife, that's not so good. Amen. That's why we have in part of our curriculum um, that's coming down the pipeline in the university, um, marriage uh, counseling for uh, pastors and CEOs because they are the boss at work. And they come back home and they think they're the boss at home and that's now how it's been designed. Amen. Then we went on and we talked about self-discipline. And it's very important for us to have self-discipline. I'm not going to get into all that. I want to get over here into um, understanding marital behavior. Understanding marital behavior. Um, um, I want you to be aware. Um, let me pray before I move any further. I'm just sensing that I need to pray. Um, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you for your wisdom, your guidance, and your grace, that as we go forward in this teaching, dear Lord, that this is uh, revealed knowledge that comes forth that is embraced by your children, your people, and that they would use it, dear Lord, to advance the kingdom of God, that everybody that is within the sound of my voice, both live and uh, through any recorded method, dear Lord, they are blessed exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works within them. Father, let them be ready receptors of the word today 
and that you, Lord, get all of the glory. We thank you for these things, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. When I talk about uh, understanding marital behavior, I'm also talking about understanding relationship behavior. Uh, I use the illustration how uh, you can have a, a woman and she uh, has been divorced three times. She's been married three times and she has a current boyfriend and you have all of these single women uh, who have not been in a dating or courtship and they'll be quick to label her unless they know her personally that she must be giving something away in order to have these relationships, but she's not. What she's doing is she's doing what's natural to her, but she seems to have a way of attracting men, and, and she's been in three serious relationships, and it looks like this one is becoming serious. And women who've not been dating say, come on, what's going on? Well, there is um, personal behavior and courtship behavior and marital behavior that if we recognize it, we can understand how we can uh, dress to look beautiful. I'm talking to the women right now. Or dress to look handsome. Men, you've not been in a courtship and you desire to be. And you can dress up and look nice and be professional or, pardon me, or whatever you are um, in your daily walk and not seem to meet anybody. How is that? Well, there are certain behaviors, and we're going to talk about them to some degree here. Um, we're really going to get into it tomorrow. I hate to say, <laughs> I hate to say it like that, but <clears throat> we're going to talk about more of that tomorrow. But tonight, um, I want you to uh, be aware that behavior is neither random nor meaningless. Behavior is neither random nor meaningless, and all behavior uh, is directed knowingly or unknowingly. Uh, toward the achievement of a goal. That's very important, that all behavior is directed knowingly or unknowingly in terms of achieving a goal. This is very important for where we're headed. Uh, and the word goal in this context uh, means a individual's uh, psychological motivation. What What's the goal? What's the um, we use the term these days, what's the end game? What's the end game? What am I after? Um, in uh, any given station, any given situation, we choose how we respond. Some of our responses uh, seem like they're programmed. Uh, my son kind of laughs like I laugh. It's kind of like a program. It kind of, when he laughs, it triggers what he has learned or observed over the course of his lifetime. Um, but what I'm saying now is, our goal may be conscious or subconscious, and if we know our goal, we can choose behavior to meet the goal. If we know the goal, and sometimes we're just floating through, but let me tell you what, there, there's a goal in mind, and this is very important for us. For example, if we always plan to have the last word in an argument, where'd that come from? Um, our need to that end, it may mean extending the argument because I've got to have the last word. It will not be done until I have said the last word. And if that is the goal in mind, then I might need to say hard things or things that I never would say in order to bring it to an end because the goal is I've got to have the last word. Now, okay, I always say, this might not be talking about you, but you know somebody. <laughs> hey, just, look, just look straight ahead, folks. Don't, don't, let, don't let the person next to you uh, get advantage of you in this regard. I'm saying now, so to understand uh, marital behavior or to understand uh, behavior, we've got to first identify what we hope to achieve by that behavior. Now, this gets a little calculated, and, but how we've been designed by God has a major impact on, on the pathway that we choose to achieve our goals. Uh, many times our goals are very similar, but we will take different paths to get there because of a wiring thing. So in general, what I'm saying is this. In a satisfying marriage relationship or in a, a satisfying courtship phase of life, 
behavior helps to achieve the goal. And I will act in a way that I believe achieves my goal, whether it does or not. And so if my behavior is not achieving my goal and my goal remains the, ha the same, I need to then look at my behavior. Now, this is not all about conflict resolution, uh, but this is the, the rubber meets the road part. I'm going to add the, the theorial part of this message in just a moment, but I need to get through to this part uh, so that it makes sense when we get there. Um, some, uh, some people who are in satisfying relationships, um, their choices create and sustain uh, a, a sense of belonging. They, they make a choice. Uh, it might be how they look at you. It might be how they respond to you. But, but their choice creates a sense of belonging. And it doesn't look like on the surface they're doing anything different. But it's, it's, it's quite different. How they respond is quite different. And sometimes we respond based on programming. Uh, we respond to our wife the way we saw our father respond to our husband. It was programmed that way. And now we need to wake up because we find out that mom and dad, remember we said that yesterday, they might have fought like cats and dogs, but they stayed together. Well, who wants that? <laughs> I, listen, I don't want to stay together out of obligation. I want to I wanna want to come home and want to be with my spouse. Amen, amen. So... Um, why then, uh, Pastor, are, are some couples seemingly able to choose behaviors that work and create a sense of belonging and it's lost on some others? My goodness, there are unfortunately um, uh, a few models of good marriages that we've seen around us. We, we have... Okay, now, how you define good is interesting, but uh, good is not just staying together from my perspective. I know some people together, and it's not good. Something needs to happen. Uh, but I'm saying, where did they see, who are they modeling? Where did they learn marriage from? Did they learn it from the Word of God? Did they learn it from the people of God? I made a face right there because, Lord, have mercy. Sometimes if you look to learn what marriage is supposed to be like from the people of God. Ah, I was going to say, I caramba. I, that, that is crazy because there are so many examples of unhappy couples in the church. It is staggering. And you know it's so. It's not, I wish it, what the, the, the scripture says, brethren, these things ought not be so. But it just is. And so, uh, but we're fortunate um, to be here. We're fortunate to uh, find a place where we can hear the word of God and learn the pathways to satisfying marriages. I said yesterday, uh, there are times when your spouse is, um, is your spouse, but they have not come up with the um, Christian background that you have, or they've not studied to show themselves approved like you have, whatever the scenario and you feel like they are your assignment. Oh, amen. Well, that, that, all that's well and good. But as they may be your assignment, understand as you identify marital behavior and trusting what we're trusting, the effect of fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. You can pray them into a place where they can be restored. That's my believing. That's my, my thought. Um, but I want to, okay, this is foundational. I know I'm talking fast. Are you taking notes? Glory be, are you wait, waiting for the video to hit YouTube? <laughs> amen, amen. All, all is well. Um, but we're looking for goals to positive relationship behavior uh, wherever you may land. Um, there is a goal in mind. If the goal is to have a more accommodating home for a relationship, accommodating courtship, a more accommodating friendship, whatever it is, um, we need to find positive relationship behavior so that my conduct, my mindset is consistent with my goal. 
I don't want to be doing one thing, have to have every last word in every last argument, and now I'm continuing to argue. What am I going to do? I'm going to try to beat you down so that I can at least, I had the last word. Well, that's ignorance going to seed. My goodness. So um, in a satisfying relationship, satisfying marriage relationship, a couple chooses to act in ways that nourish the relationship. I've got to extract behavior that takes away from the relationship, and I've got to nourish a sense of belonging, not a sense of my way or the highway or this is how it should work. I, I got to nourish a sense of belonging, and so rather than act solely out of self-interest, my goodness, so many times a couple comes to me, and what I am finding is that they really do love each other, but they're simply trying to not have to change anything and have their spouse change everything as a statement of love to them. Wow. Wow. And so uh, we have to choose the behavior that supports or gives positive goals to marriage. And there are four positive goals I want to talk to you about that really foster uh, good relationship behavior. Four goals. Four goals. And so if you're taking notes, and I trust, you know, I didn't say grab your pen and paper. I, I just, uh, or you might be taking notes on your phone. Amen. You're watching on your tablet and you're taking notes on your phone. You have arrived. <laughs> Glory be to God. But if you're taking down uh, notes today, number one, I want you to write down, I need to accept responsibility for my individual behavior. Uh, we are in a relationship that's fine and good, and it's so much easier to criticize, judge, and to have a commentary, a running commentary on the other person that is a part of that relationship. But one thing I know for sure is that I need to accept responsibility for me. Oh, amen. And, 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 and for every one of you who think, well, I'm good. I'm good. I know you're good. I know you're good. I know you're good. But hang in there, Tiger. We're going to say some things tonight uh, that might, might have you looking for adjustments. Amen. All is well. Um, the second thing is I need to be accountable for me. The second thing I need to do, are you ready for this? I need to cooperate. <laughs> that sounds like I'm in a, in a classroom. Everybody, if you would just cooperate, no, but I need to cooperate, I cooperate. I've got to recognize that there is another imperfect person that is a part of this. And to the degree that we cooperate with one another, we will be blessed. Amen. 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 We're going to talk about that a little bit uh, further. Um, the third thing I need to do is I need to contribute to the relationship. Now, that's a big one. Um, because many times people believe that my contribution to the relationship is, well, I go to work, don't I? Um, I don't yell at you when I come home, right? I, you know, and they fill in the blanks. Or um, they, you know, both members, the husband and the wife, they work, or the, both people work, and, but they contribute to the relationship. So if we're in a courtship, how do we contribute to the relationship when we're trying to develop a relationship? That feeds the How do I contribute to the relationship? I'm not talking about um, a woman giving her body or a man um, being emasculated and bowing down, but how do I contribute to the relationship? And if you give that some thought, it affects your behavior. We're going to talk about that tonight. How do I contribute to this relationship? So some of you have been married for a long time, and you think your contribution should be already known because it has been established, but you've never talked about it. And sometimes uh, my wife does things. My wife, she, we introduced her last night, and she had so much to say. I told her we didn't have enough time for the broadcast today. <laughs> now, for those of you who, <laughs> who were with us last night, my wife, was she, she was smiling and grinning. <laughs> but this is not her format. Glory be to God. You know, we, we, listen, we might have a 
forum where we bring her back and so you can hear her voice on matters. She's got a lot of wisdom on some things, but this isn't it. Uh, but however, what I'm trying to say now is um, how do we contribute to the relationship is very important. How we contribute to the relationship. I've got to, how do I contribute to the relationship? No, I know I contribute, you know, I work, amen, and um, I um, do things, amen, um, but most of the things that we do are contributing to the upkeep of the house, upkeep of the property, upkeep, of, upkeep and maintenance of the car, and, and, and I'm not saying that none of that contributes to the upkeep or the managing of the relationship, but how do you make the relationship better? We'll get to that in a minute. And number four is um, that we have to be sold out on encouraging one another. Sold out. When I have an encourager, man, well, that's awesome. That's awesome when I have an encourager. And so uh, how does the goal influence a couple's pattern or of relating? Uh, we're going to talk about that in some detail, but I want to put in the mix here. Now, let me, um, I know I haven't talked about much, um, but uh, I want to uh, talk about how we happen to be here. Okay, and I'm going to do, um, for this next segment, uh, and you don't feel like a sec, that was kind of wrapping up yesterday. Um, and so this is the segment that begins uh, today, uh, starting right now. Okay, and so we're going to get back to practical um, that we were on, but we want to start talk about, um, just give some illustrations of how uh, men and women, um, how they've been wired differently from one another, and they see the differences, but they've not been paying attention to the differences from a perspective of how can we be better partners together. They've been paying attention to um, their own frustration, and you'll see in a minute. Um, it's kind of interesting, and I'll talk about this more on tomorrow night, but um, Valentine's Day is one of the most challenging days of the year. It's kind of a throw-in. Um, it's a throw-in romance day. And so now, uh, all that a woman craves or a man aspires to um, is kind of, uh, they, they want things to be, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, we, we use the word nowadays, uh, they want it to be organic that things need to be organic and grow naturally. Uh, well, Valentine's Day is a whole lot of things, but something, but natural is not one of them. It's contrived. And so now I've got to take a contrived event and put uh, an organic portion on it that out of uh, the goodness of my heart and the expression of my love, it, it it's, can be expressed any other day. But on Valentine's Day, that's where you really show out. And so we've got people, men and women, who are spending money that they don't have or whatever. They may have the money, but it's a day for commerce, and it's expressed in a day of love. They sell more flowers and more chocolate, and none of those are bad things. But I'm saying that the goal on Valentine's Day is for merchants to make money, and it's been translated by men and women that it's a time where we're going to do something that is loving, amen, and it has come in as Valentine's Day. But Valentine's Day is often a disaster because of the occasion of the day. And so I want to talk about relationship aspects or relationship uh, respect and connection as a part of Valentine's Day. And so if you're taking notes on this portion, and I encourage you to do that, I want you to talk about respect and connection because that's what Valentine's Day ultimately is about from my perspective, and I'll explain that as we go forward. And, and, and I want to talk about respect and connection and how not understanding those elements presents us from having uh, all of the romance and awesome moments that we think are supposed to be a part of Valentine's Day. You know. Um, Valentine's Day is supposed to be about intimacy and all of the, the um, um, romance that people actually crave. And it's awesome to crave intimacy and, and romance. And I think all of those things are appropriate and holy. Say amen. There's a, you know, if it's expressed in a holy atmosphere, 
Amen. This is church. <laughs> you were Pastor Brian, this is church, right? And so I want to lay this out with a very basic framework so that everybody gets uh, what we're talking about. Uh, whether you're a man or a woman, okay, whether you're a man or a woman, so I'm looking from both sides of the spectrum right now. If what you're focused on and what you're committed to uh, is, uh, is a particular result, um, it's all about producing some kind of outcome or result or destination. Um, that's what Valentine's Day can uh, in a contriving way kind of do is it's all about a result and for for the women um, it's when they get to work the next day well what does your man do for you and and so now they want to be able to outshine on their 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 little group of friends whatever it is and for the men well what did you do or here with the men ask, how much trouble did you get in <laughs> it's a different perspective because if they didn't do enough, Lord have mercy. Now I've got to live that down. Um, and so there was, they were focused on a particular result and a, a producing some kind of outcome. And for, for those of you who don't see it this way, amen. Um, but here, just continue to hear me out. Um, see, when what naturally arises uh, in relationships in terms of love or attention, um, it comes down to um, what I'm going to call tonight respect. And if you have read other books, uh, Love and Respect, uh, those are awesome uh, principles. But I want to call them all respect today. Um, over in the book of Ephesians chapter 5, it says, husbands, love your wives. And then at the bottom, verse 33, it talks about wives see that you reverence your husbands and that's where uh, many books and many articles have been written on uh, a wife needs love and a man needs respect but today for our framework I'm going to talk about both of them in terms of respect both of them in terms of respect and so uh, for a woman um, we say well how can love be res how can love and respect be the same uh, for a woman I'm, what I'm saying is uh, what naturally arises in importance is respect. Um, it is impossible for me to love where there is no respect. And that, that's kind of the foundation I want to put out there. And so you're, you can't produce results without sufficient respect. Glory be to God. And so a big, and, and big results require big respect, often uh, from lots of people. Um, if we're talking about someone in a, a corporation or something, big Big respect uh, has to come from lots of people in order to get the job done. It, it becomes central uh, to what it to that what which we need and what we look for and we are and what we're creating and even uh, protecting, uh, being respected by the people um, whom we need to be respected by. It's a big deal. And so, on the other hand, if you're um, uh, if you're more uh, in a state of not committed to a particular result, um, um, what we call uh, uh, open to options, if you're in an open to options, you don't need a particular result, then you don't need as much respect. And that's why when we are talking about courtships and relationships, this area of respect comes in because no, who, which woman out there would date or be in a courtship with someone who did not respect them? Well, not many, if any. Glory be to God. The only way you'd spend time with them is if, you know, it didn't matter. This is not a relationship, so I don't need to respect you so we can just have an exchange and I tolerate the areas that I don't and I don't have to see you anymore, so it's not a big deal. But when it begins to get serious or go down a pathway that this could be more than something casual, respect plays a high value in the individual yeah, you know, I, boy, he, watch, he, watch this. Boy, he's fine, but I don't respect him. Boy, that, 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 but for a woman, that's a conundrum. How can he look that good and I don't respect him? <laughs> that's, that's another topic for another day. Um, and so uh, what I have found um, over years of observation that Women are many times attracted to men 
at times when they are not in respect mode. Um, I need to say that a little differently. Many times men, women are attracted to men when they're playing and when they're doing something. I mean, their guard is down, they're being uh, jovial, uh, they're making everybody laugh, and um, they, they, uh, all of their options are open, you know. Um, they are at a social gathering and they are just open and free and um, they're not, uh, nobody is a goal, nothing is trying to happen. They're just, they're free. And, and for a woman, he, he's open and he's talking and he's expressing himself and, and he's fun to be around and they are attracted to him when he is playing. But being attracted to a man when they are playing does not engender respect. That women are generally, um, they generally find respect for a man in what he does when he's working. So they will fall in love with the one who is playing, but they will, res they will respect the one that's working. That, that's why women have so many problems. You know, he, you know we, we started out so good, but then, you know, I, I just, I don't, I don't know if I can respect him. And so um, it, it's interesting when, when he's focused on something and it is not what you think is respectful, you it kind of sours the milk. It kind of sours the milk. And I'm, I'm talking about Valentine's Day still because we, the, it's, a, it's a play day. Amen. And many times a man, because it's not play anymore, because he's, if he's got to figure out how much the budget is for Valentine's Day and what it's going to take to please her. And oh, by the way, ladies, men have been, I don't know if I'm putting... Okay, we'll just, if we come back to it, we come back to it. Men have been designed by God to find fulfillment in pleasing you. I don't think so, Pastor. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang in there, Tiger. <laughs> Hold, just, just stay with me for a minute. Men have been designed, designed. That, that's why... Um, um, cheerleaders are so important because as she's on the side cheering for him, something innate triggers on the inside of him that if I can please her, then it will be well with us. And they can do things that they wouldn't ordinarily do. It works for little boys. When a bunch of little girls come and watch them play, they'll Boy, they'll beat each other up trying to please the little girl or they'll want to score the touchdown. It's something on the inside of them. And women, if you're not careful, you'll say, look at them. Look at what I do to them. And some women dress appropriately so that they can do that to men. And it's a power thing. And we're not getting into that. That's not our message tonight. What I'm saying is a man's wiring is such that he really wants to please Initially, his girlfriend, and if it goes to a, um, a marriage, then he wants to please his wife. But if a woman is not careful, she will find power in being ambivalent. That if I don't react as if I am being pleased, then he will do more to please me. And so that can be used uh, as a way of manipulation. We, we're going to talk about the end game. What's the goal? Because the goal determines the feeling, which determines the behavior. The goal determines the feeling, determines the behavior. And if I start figuring out how men are wired or how women are wired, we'll talk about them along the way as we go, then if my heart is not right, and I am looking to manipulate, have some one-upsmanship and, and uh, have an advantage, then I can begin to manipulate how he's wired to my own advantage. And I don't want to say shame on you, but that is not building a positive atmosphere. That's not behavior that's conducive to a, a 
positive atmosphere for the two of you to develop. That is more division, uh, divisionary, if that's a word, causes division in a relationship, even though you seem to be going along together. I'm still talking about Valentine's Day, but I'm also trying to put in here these, these elements. And when we see that men are blinder focused, I'm putting my hands up like this because these are the blinders that are on a horse's uh, eye, uh, next to a horse's eyes, so that he can remain focused, he, she can remain focused as they run down the track. Men have it built in. They have it built in. And they can be focused on pleasing her. If he pleases her, he is most fulfilled. If he can't ever seem to please her, understand, there'll be a period of time where he will work harder in order to please her. But if he ever learns that he can't do anything to please her, he might not get a divorce, but he will cut that rope. And if it happens early in a relationship and he still loves you and he's not going to leave you, but he's, he's only going to do so much. And, and women have come in and they have learned their man, say, well, he's only going to do what he's going to do. That generally means that somewhere along the line, and that, listen, I'm not putting blame on anybody. I'm just describing how we've been designed. That generally means that somewhere along the line, she thought, that she wasn't going to show him any satisfaction. And he went along with it so far, he just cut the cord. Didn't cut her off. He cut the cord on what he is willing to do to please her. And they didn't get a divorce, but the relationship suffers. Now, why am I talking about this? This is supposed to be a, a happy time. Folks, this is a, we, we should have called this, we should have called this conference raw. <laughs> raw, you know, like, um, like that TV uh, wrestling show, Raw, if you know anything about it. Just, I don't know if it is, but hey, Raw. That's why we're here today, because we have to point out these things that men and women have learned along the way that detract from the relationship rather than build the relationship, but because they are common, nobody identifies them. Wow. So when we were talking about on yesterday's behavior, all of the things that people do um, that is counter- um, uh, counterproductive uh, for a relationship, how they can criticize and how they can stonewall and how they can do all of the things that really detract from a relationship and they're common. Well, I, I remember my mom said, I'm not speaking to your father. Whoa, man. Or the father said, um, uh, I'll be late tomorrow. Well, daddy, you got to work overtime? No, but she's got to learn that I'm not coming home, so forth and so on. People do things that are crazy. They say they want a better relationship, but they keep sowing into this feeling and belief and then behavior that detracts from the relationship. I'm supposed to be talking about Valentine. I hope you got your chocolates and your whatever, I was gonna, um, sparkling juice, so forth and so on. Amen. But if we don't open it up, who's gonna open it up? So we're talking about love and respect. Let me get back to that. Love and respect is so important. See, here's an interesting thing. Let me, let me, just, give you, um, let me just give you something interesting here. We said that women fall in love at, when men are at play because the ability to connect is easier. I connect because his, his guard is down. He's playing. And he'll come up and he'll hug and say, oh, this is my new girlfriend. And he's just, everybody's just playing and we're laughing. And she's saying, in Jesus' name, in Jesus. <laughs> I'm teasing. <laughs> but they're playing. And she'll, you know, she'll love his happy, uh, go lucky attitude. Amen. And they're playing because they're easy, men are easier to connect with when they are playing. It just, it's just how they've been designed, easier. Um, and it seems like, I'm looking at my notes here. It's, it seems like that's when women will really become very attracted to them and even fall in love with them. Uh, but they don't admire them for their play. Again, we said it earlier, but they admire them for who they are when they are men at work. Men at work. And there are two different, very different uh, ways of being. That, that's two very different things. Uh, one is uh, uh, more available and connective 
playing and it feels good, but the feel good and connective individual doesn't inspire respect and admiration. It just doesn't. And, and then the, the way men are when they are focused and committed to uh, getting something done is awesome and to a woman and she can respect him from that, but it's tough to connect with him with that because he's focused. Oh, he was in the coffee shop and he was looking at his laptop and you walked in and you had such a good time at your um, uh, mutual friend's party, but he didn't even notice you and you were looking good. What happened? Where's that guy? Well, now he's focused. And oh, he'll, he'll wake up and say, oh, hey, yeah, yeah, good to see you. Get up, give you a little, you know, a little short hug, all that kind of stuff. I'm talking about courtship and dating. Um, but, but he's hard to connect to. He's hard to connect to uh, at that moment, and so it, it's a little bit different. Um, and so she might recognize that and say, oh, I didn't mean to interrupt you in your job. You know, go back to what you're doing. Oh, no, 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 we have that kind of interaction. But when we understand how we've been wired and we're, as we're getting down to as uh, we go into this line of, uh, of, uh, of our, our conference, uh, we're going to learn some things that are going to really be a blessing to both the men and the women on what attracts each other and uh, what annoys each other. And so for women, um, but not just for women, um, they pay particular attention to how we connect. And that is for both for um, those who are married and those who are courtship and those who are desiring to be in a courtship. Connection is king. Connection. How do we connect? And uh, women, they tend to pay more attention to connection um, unless they're being willy. Uh, and, you know, sometimes women can get on a... Um, uh, they can be aggressive and they can be in hunt mode. I can say it like that. And uh, when they're in hunt mode, uh, they have to be careful because that's, a, that's not a natural. Uh, women can be aggressive. Listen, I am not trying to pigeonhole men and women for any particular behavior. I am simply observing what I have seen in the natural realm for thousands of people who have come to my office uh, for counseling and in the Bible. That's what I am putting together. I'm not trying to pigeonhole you. Some, somebody felt offended by what I just said. I don't even know why, but I felt it in the spirit. <laughs> Glory be to God. But connection is key for a woman. And it's so important to a man, but it's key for a woman. Uh, it's something that they are constantly monitoring. A woman is constant. If she has children, she's constantly monitoring her connection with her children. I um, I, I haven't. I've had awesome. Uh, I, I talked about last uh, time. I've had awesome uh, folks that have worked with me, worked for me over the years, and um, some of my assistants have been so aware of connection that not only did they keep track of their connections, but they had learned that the auspice prospers when they have a dispersed awareness for even my connections. Uh, Pastor, have you spoke with so-so and so in a, in, a, in a minute? No, I haven't done that. Get them on the phone. Folks, let me tell you what. With pinpoint accuracy, there, the timing was impeccable. Why? Because I had people around me that understood connection in a way that wasn't innate to me. I understand the value of networking. I understand connection, but it doesn't come natural. But for a woman, it comes natural. Amen. And if I respect it, then it nurtures relationship. I'm not talking about anything other than a business relationship, but I'm talking about understanding how someone is designed and not exploiting it, but benefiting from it. I'm talking about your relationship right now. If I understand how my wife is designed, if I understand how my husband is designed, I'm not trying to exploit that, but I can understand and benefit from it by design, by God's design. And they too shall be one flesh. They will feel the same thing and they will function as one. Uh, amen, somebody. So connection is something that women are constantly monitoring. They're monitoring the connection with their children. If they have children, they're connecting, con uh, monitoring the connection uh, with their boss or superiors or whatever job environment. They're also monitoring the relationship with their husband, significant other has become a popular phrase. They are monitoring the connection and it means something to them. Glory be to God. 
And so um, one of the things that goes along with monitoring the connection, they wouldn't say it like this, but I'm going to say it like this. They're not saying, am I monitoring, am I loved enough? But there's an aspect of what they are monitoring that is, am I respected enough? Women are designed to monitor, am I connected enough? Uh, and that, that's a big deal, am I connected enough? That's why Valentine's Day uh, starts ringing bells for women because it is a time to check the connection. And some men, they've got into, you know, um, it's going to be a romantic night. Now, I'm not saying any of that is wrong. What I'm saying is um, the marketers have found out that if I can take advantage of this need to check the connection, it can drive sales. Glory be to God. I'm not anti-romance, folks. Uh, we did some, we, we, had, we had more, uh, anyway, that's another testimony, but we did more on Valentine's Day this year for each other than we've ever had. And it wasn't because of Valentine's Day, it's because she loves me. <laughs> Let me leave that alone. That's, that's another conference, that's another conference. Uh, but women are designed to monitor, um, am I connected enough? Am I connected? Uh, am I connected to my children? Am I connected to this person? Um, the connection with that person, and, and, and that's what has women experience that they can get what they need when they have the proper connection. A connection for a woman, to turn, now, and I'm not talking about manipulation right now. I'm talking about unless I have a proper connection uh, with somebody, I can't get what I, it's a, um, I, I can't have the interaction that I need. Uh, it's get, getting what I need. They can't get done what they need to get done if they, if they don't have this feeling of connection. Not about feeling. I hope this is coming out right. And that's why um, many um, women and many wives and girlfriends of men, they get frustrated and even afraid because the focus of many men uh, being uh, the need and, the, and desires to produce uh, and provide, that seems to be an obstacle. Men have a need to provide and produce and they have to focus and there are times when the desire to produce and provide becomes an obstacle because while you are focused on the need to provide and produce, the very thing that you have done and do that causes me to admire you becomes a place that I'm, as a woman, I'm not a woman, but as a woman, they seem to, this is my observation as a minister, and I can show you in the Bible some things, that they seem to want to attack the thing that keeps you from connecting with me, but that's the thing that is the source of my respect of you. Kind of a conundrum, isn't it? Women are not scatterbrained. I'm just talking about how they're functioning based on how they are wired. Men, um, they, will, they will go to work, work long hours, extra hours, and that focus on provision and protection for their wife is a demonstration of their love and commitment. And so now he is putting in more time thinking, reading, doing, spending time at work because he loves her so unconditionally. He's coming home wrung out or he's he's doing the extra thing. And then when she comes in and she is she sees that what he is doing, she appreciates what he is doing to provide for them. But she also sees it as an obstacle for them connecting. And nobody's laughing but the devil. And so um, you can see we have a problem. Houston, we have a problem. But what we're going to do uh, through our lessons, through this conference, is we're going, to, um, we're going to address some of those things, and we're going to give you some workarounds and some solutions. And we're going to help uh, with understanding how we have been designed. And we've not been designed to be flawed together. 
we have been designed to work together. And as we work together, creating an environment so that both of us can flourish, there's a level of understanding that allows us to operate within the framework that God has designed us and to flourish with one another. Boy, let the church say amen right about there. My goodness. When, when, see, when a woman experiences, I'm talking about women, and I'll get to men. Don't worry about me. We, we, we've got tonight and two more days. We're good. When a woman experiences something that is uh, between uh, her connecting uh, with her man, let's say it like that, uh, we said they tend to attack that thing. And thank God for a woman that will fight for me. But when she begins to fight, the very thing that was used for her to respect me and the very thing that I need to do to provide for her, how I many of you know that's frustrating? She's acting out of love. She wants to connect with me, yet she seems to have something in her that is pulling at the fabric or pulling at the integrity of what it is that I need to do for us or that I perceive that I need to do for us. We can get there too. And um, it boils down to now, it looks like what she's doing is disrespecting that which needs to be respected. And without respect, it's very difficult for a woman to love a man. Uh, she may fall in love with, remember, what he's at play, but she respects him for his work. But there's a problem because he's working, what he's working at and is productive in is what makes respect possible, but it seems to be an obstacle today. And we can't connect because he's, too busy working uh, because he works too much or he works too long, fill in the blank, you know, and um, that opens another door that uh, men's attempt to connect with uh, women occurs uh, in uh, disrespecting what she needs to have respected. So we've been talking about how a woman, woman is doing all of these natural things and um, is not showing respect to a man, but now the, the, there are some things that he does that disrespects her disrespects how she's been designed. Glory be to God. And men attempt, men attempt to connect with a woman. Um, and often when they attempt to connect with her, they're disrespecting what she needs to have respect of. And so both men and women are attempting to connect, which is a good thing, uh, with the uh, opposite sex. And they do it in many ways that, that shows to the other person disrespect for what matters to them most because it creates what is a bigger disconnection. Let me give you some examples. What I found is how she attempts to connect, and we're going to give you examples so all this to be clear, how she attempts to connect with him will show him disrespect without her even knowing that she's trying to connect and not trying to be disrespectful. She will try to connect with him by complaining about how much he works. She's trying to connect with him by complaining about the lack of connection, which that's the problem, you know, and it shows up with work and it might show up in something other, and we'll talk about those in a minute. She doesn't understand that the, um, the effect of being blinder focused, uh, like uh, men, they, they don't, women don't understand the intensity of being blinder focused. And, um, and that's a result of testosterone. That's a whole nother class. But one of the ways that she'll show disrespect is she wants to connect with him. So what she'll do, we talked about it last time, she'll interrupt what he's doing. Uh, and what, when, when she interrupts what he's doing, she has determined that what he is doing to her doesn't seem um, like it's worth it. <laughs> He's focusing on something that has no value. So this is a good time to interrupt. And all the men said, yeah, that's right, see, that, that's disrespectful. Now, don't say it right now, <laughs> but that's disrespectful. Because 
To him, she wasn't doing, he wasn't doing anything worthwhile. To her, he wasn't doing anything worthwhile. So this is a good time to interrupt. He sees it, pardon me, he sees it as disrespect. Not knowing that when you are single focused, you're very picky about what you do. Very picky about what you do. And, um, and if, if it's not worthwhile, then you don't do it, even if it's channel surfing. And it's actually, uh, folks, I'm talking about this is good news because this is a revelation for some. Because with some adjustments to how uh, they, to understand and how, and understanding how they work, we can fix it. And we can have a better connection. Say amen, somebody. Better than we have ever imagined. And as much as you want it, ladies, and better uh, than you have imagined, it can be. And it goes the other way with a husband. For example, he may want to uh, connect with his wife in a classic way. I ask you if you are all grown. He wants to connect with his wife in a classic way, wanting to be affectionate. Uh, he wants to be intimate. He wants to be close with her. He wants to be hugging and kissing and all those sorts of things. And most wives enjoy closeness and they certainly enjoy connection. But if the timing, all the ladies cheered on the inside, if the timing of that happens when she interprets that he is coming to me, but he doesn't respect my need for sleep. <laughs> which means, which means, now watch this, which means he doesn't respect my job. He doesn't respect all that I do. He, he doesn't respect all that had gone on around here before he got here. It doesn't respect uh, all that I've had to do with the children. I had to fix dinner and, oh, by the way, the next door neighbor, whatever, or by the way, my co-worker acted stupid today. He's not respecting that I've had this full day. All he knows is when he comes home or when we are together, he wants me ready. And all the ladies said, that's disrespectful. <laughs> now the man just says, wait, 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 wait. She's my woman. She don't. Listen, we'll get to all that. We'll get to all of that. Many times she's saying, I need sleep today. She said, you slept yesterday. No, that's a joke. That's a joke. Okay, that's a joke. <laughs> it's your turn to take the kids. Uh, you, you, I'm, I'm talking to me. I'm saying, uh, and that thing goes down the tube so fast. And um, everybody's trying to connect, but they have not learned how the opposite sex has been wired. And so when they try to connect in the ways that seem common and so reasonable, from my standpoint, man talking to man, or so reasonable from my standpoint, a woman talking to other woman, we find that not only are they unreasonable for the opposite sex, but they are disrespectful and it takes respect in order to connect. It takes respect. If I don't respect what she's done all day, how can I expect her to connect? Pastor, say, well, she, well, I don't want to get into all the arguments about that. Um, let me just go ahead. She wants connection. And many times she undermines him by showing, by him showing affection from his mindset. Let me say, she wants connection and undermines him showing, I mean, showing affection from his mindset. And after he is rejected, for example, uh, a man comes to his wife and he wants to connect. And he wants to connect in a traditional, like I say, in a classic way. He wants to connect physically with her because that's how he's wired. He is not just a, okay, uh, everybody grown, right? <laughs> he, he's not just a physical beast. He's not just a horned dog. He doesn't have just sex on the brain. He's been wired um, to want to connect with you that way because what intimacy means to a man, we're going to talk about more about this on Thursday and Friday, it doesn't necessarily mean to a woman, it is bonding and connecting for both of them, but for completely different reasons. Uh, for a, a man, I guess we're going to get into this a little bit because that's how I'm talking, um, his desire to be with her is many times restorative. He's had a hard day and he knows that his wife 
has the unique capacity to push the reset button. And she can push the reset button through connecting with him. And, and she doesn't see it that way. That's not quite how it works for her. Um, she wants the connection, and she doesn't want to undermine him, but he's not respecting all the things that she has been through over the course of the day. And so she says, I'm tired. Can we pick another time? And something, and if they're in a good or quality relationship, he'll say, sure, honey, he understands, but he understands, but not like the woman thinks he understands, because he still feels rejected, and he still has not been reset, reset emotionally and intellectually and even physically, and so he's leaving with agreement, but he's leaving with a burden and she's not aware of it. And she'll say, well, what's wrong with you? Or so forth. <laughs> Glory be to God. But we're trying to work this out. Um, but so he, he's rejected and put off for another time. And I say rejected, and some people say, well, press, so that's too strong a word because she was willing. She was just tired. I understand. And he can deal with it. He's a big boy. But that doesn't mean that the rejection is any less. He's going to manage the rejection, but I need to put it in a word that is strong enough so that the woman understands that he doesn't just need to grow up and he doesn't just need to go into the other room and, and watch a movie and it'll be all right when we come around together on the time that we have scheduled. I'm saying it's not the same. We'll, again, we'll be, um, when to, to thir uh, uh, Thursday and Friday aren't just sex, so I don't want to paint them like that, but we'll deal with um, more of the interaction between a husband and wife from that perspective as we get down that road. Um, she wants connection too, let me say that, but she is not intentionally undermining his desire to connect, but that's how it feels. And so if nobody says it, no, nobody understands it. And he undermines her feelings um, of respect when he wants to connect through intimacy and it's just the wrong time for her. And he doesn't even know it. And he, she, you know, if he respected me, he'd understand that I need sleep. And after such a tough day, we've gone through this. And after, after your kids, and uh, they called me from the school, and uh, I, I, it was tough on the job uh, for me today, too. And everybody's had a rough day, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> it goes on and on and on. Like I said earlier, sex resets him. It doesn't reset her. It reconnects her. It resets him but it reconnects her. And she can feel, well, we're, we're good and connected. He still desires me, and so she's okay. But he is not the same. And so she enjoys, enjoys intimacy just as well, um, but it doesn't reset her. It, again, it ratifies the covenant. And, and the point of the conversation is that quality of the connections can, uh, are what the people crave. Now we need to engage in the behavior that bring us to quality connections for both of us. Amen, amen. And so in the presence of respect, uh, we can really connect. And so we've got to learn what is disrespectful, disrespectful so that we can adjust our behavior. Oh, say amen. We're going to get there from here. And so um, what, what, what I'm asking for for the husbands and the wives and for those people who are in developing relationships, are you ready for this one? Grace. <laughs> unmerited favor. I hope I'm, I'm talking about these things in a way that makes sense to you, but unmerited favor, um, that you're going to open yourself up, open wide enough to connect, uh, to see that uh, we're going to expose the enemy and uh, not our frustrations. Uh, we're going to be together, two people who love each other. You know, I was uh, meditating on this. Let, let me do this before I, I get into uh, the next portion here. Um, amen. I want to, um, I know I've, I've dropped a lot on you uh, right now, and it seems like an appropriate time. Oh, man, the clock is really gone. Wow. Uh, do, do we have any questions or, or uh, something I need to address right here? Um, I've got, I can give you more illustrations. We'll have more illustrations tomorrow night uh, about the male and female, um, how God has made us. We're going to really get into um, some of the seasons of life uh, as we move forward. Um, but I would like to open up right now and put it in the uh, chat, if you will, and I can see it from here. Glory be to God. 
Amen. He said, no questions. <laughs> Amen. There's somebody that spoke for everybody that said, we don't have any questions. Keep going. <laughs> uh, amen. Amen. Listen, um, the, the, the things that I'm talking about now um, are, and I'll keep monitoring the, um, um, the chat room, and so you can ask a question, and I will pause and answer your questions, because I looked at the clock finally, and I said, wow, I need to get in to this other side of the lesson. Um, but it's kind of interesting. Um, in um, 1 Corinthians um, chapter 6, um, the lack of knowledge of the Word of God and how we have been designed by God is seems like it's infinite because it says, What? Know you not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, uh, wh uh, whom you belong to? I'm, I'm paraphrasing. But people have not understood not only the spiritual aspects, but the natural aspects of how we've been designed by God. And it has caused a world of trouble. See, I want to connect with my wife. She loves me. And she wants to connect with me. And we want to connect in a way that's not disrespectful. I, I you know, I, I, the last thing I want to do is be disrespectful to her and not value her day, but I don't see it from her perspective. So we need some grace. We need some grace so that every time there's a, uh, this thing that we feel like we've disconnected, um, uh, I, I've, I've got to be aware that I'm not trying to control every moment. I can't control every moment um, the way that uh, the world particularly tries to control moments. Uh, when I don't understand something, the thing to do is control it. Right now, we're trying to understand it and bring it to the table where God can tell us what we need to do. Glory be to God. I'm saying that the doors of connection are not closed. They are open. We just need to understand where they are and the timing of those things. That's huge for us. And so um, I, I can be the romantic in the dashing, indivi dashing individual. Uh, that I need to be for her, but I need to understand how can I respect her in this moment and not just be, you know, macho, macho man. I, how can I be the man that she needs for me to be? Well, that's, 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 that's a big deal. How can um, I create the loving feeling? I almost start singing. You've got that love and feet. No, amen. <laughs> um, but what we are looking for will only happen to the degree that we understand what we are working with and operate within that framework. We have been created to be suitable for one another, not identical to one another. That's why we don't all see it the same way. Respect must happen first. Amen. Amen. Um, this is kind of interesting. Um, I'm not a, uh, I'm not a, um, well, I, I'm, I'm into technology, but I was noticing uh, on an app called TikTok that uh, there are a lot of uh, pranksters. As a matter of fact, uh, sometimes around here during the evening, um, m m somebody will find something where there has been a prank pra played on somebody, and it is hilarious, and they will then uh, show it around the family, and we can all get a good laugh. Everybody has seen a prank on TikTok. Well, there's particular uh, pranks that I have seen. Uh, I'm not a TikTok guy, but I've seen enough to use it as an illustration today. There apparently is a energy drink called Bang. And so the camera is running and uh, men and women are going up to their spouse, presumably their spouse, and they're saying, hey, honey, you want a bang? Now they're talking about the beverage. But you and I both know that bang is a slang for uh, physical intimacy. I'll, I'll put that to make it clean. And so it's kind of interesting that, in the, and I'm looking at the responses because I'm thinking about, because I was writing this message, and I was saying, wow, some of the women were annoyed because it was the wrong timing. And you could tell that here he is coming up to me after I have worked a long day and asking me if I want a bang and then she and some of them said no and he said no honey 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 bang and he held up the uh, 
I wish I'd bought a bottle of it or a can of it. Uh, you want a bank? She said, oh, okay, kind of let him off the hook. And it was a big laugh. She had been pranked. But there are a couple of occasions when the unsuspecting man attempting to prank his wife, and it happened the other way, um, where women have come up to men, uh, hey, honey, you want a bang? And because of how he's wired, of co because he needs the reset, he say, yeah, thinking of the physical intimacy, and she'll say, here's a can of bang for you. And they, oh, okay, okay, I got you, got me, you got me, so forth. Um, and as I was looking at uh, a couple of those, I began to see that they were playing with how we've been wired. And the game was whether you want a can of energy drink or, and some, and, or whatever, and it was just kind of funny from my perspective on how some of the women were say, sure, because it was a good time. And the man, he dropped the prank altogether, camera fell to the floor. I'm just saying it was a good time because he wasn't passing up an opportunity to reset the clock. Glory be to God. And she was ready for connection. And it kind of worked. But they, it's just kind of, I hope you're understanding the illustration on how powerful it was that they were playing with how they had been designed. Glory be to God. For both sexes, the assumption that what people are doing with their time and energy and resources, um, for the most part, um, th that you would, would grant that there is a good reason. If they're doing something, grant that there is a good reason for it. If they are coming to connect, grant that there's a good reason for it. Now, we're, we're going to get into that in a little bit because the women say, oh, no, pastor, don't tell me. No, 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 I'm not telling you uh, that anything has to change and now you're not a good wife if you don't drop everything and connect with him the way he wants to connect. Uh, I think there's room for that, but there's also room for grace. That's why we're bringing it up. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to solve a, a, a problem here. Boy, this clock is eating. Listen, I might go long tonight because I'm looking at this clock and it's, it's frustrating me, it's disrespecting me. Um, and so if you want to tune out, it'll be on the video. Amen. I don't know if I will or not. I'm just saying I got to get some information in. But I find I'm, I'm sure that we need this piece because this has been a piece, the piece of connection, the piece of respect has been a piece that is necessary for our homes. But we don't talk about it enough. Well, you know, men are like that. Well, you know, women, they just come on, man, you just go with the flow. But if we would take the time to understand what God had done, and we would take the time to understand how to create an environment so that we both can flourish. If when my husband comes to me, he's not just a horn dog, that's the phrase I didn't use earlier, but he wants to connect or he needs a reset, maybe he needs me, maybe that affects my attitude. And when uh, the wife uh, comes to the man and she is complaining about his job, he's not saying, why is she just, why won't she let my job go? Because that's where he finds definition. That's where he finds purpose. And she keeps attacking him. Him, that's how he feels. But she's trying to connect with him. Now there's another level of grace. Well, why didn't she say she wanted to connect? I didn't say she wanted sex right now. I said she wanted to connect right now. See, you got to speak a man's language. It can be connected to sex, but she needs to connect right now. She needs to connect in a way that allows her to feel one with you. Suitable. Glory be to God. So for all of the singles that are listening to this dissertation or whatever we have going on tonight, I'm trying to give you these pieces so that you can see the ebb and flow and you can understand going in to a relationship, how some of these things work. It's going to be a big deal. See, listen, let me, let me, let me kind of put this down here. This is for all of you. Wherever you are on the spectrum of relationship. If you want a high level of respect, it's called support. <laughs> nothing builds value greater than having the right support in a close relationship. My goodness. 
Um, you, you know, it's kind of interesting. When we talk about support, uh, there, there's a reason for uh, 1 Corinthians 7 and verse number 1, where it talks about not concerning the things wherever you wrote unto me, is, it is good for a man not to touch a woman, nevertheless, uh, to avoid uh, fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. Um, and then it says, verse 3, let the husband render due benevolence, uh, or let's call that respect, uh, to the wife, and likewise, let the wife render due benevolence unto the husband. Now, we know that this is a scripture that is commonly used to talk about uh, sexual intercourse or physical intimacy. Why am I talking so fast? I'm not in any rush. Glory be to God. I'm, I don't know why I'm talking so fast. So that scripture is talking about a phys because I see the clock. That's why I'm talking about that, that fast. Glory be to God. And I'm affecting my, my screen. Amen. Um, the reason 1 Corinthians 7 is there is because God knows how he has designed us. And he knows or he knew that when a man would come to a woman um, or a woman would come to a man, that there needed to be a level of cooperation and understanding and grace for the both of them so that they could both connect. And they're, they're using the analogy of render due benevolence, but render due benevolence can come across as spending time with me or being physically intimate with me. Everybody has translated it into uh, physical sexual intercourse, and it can be that, and it can be nurturing and nuzzle, uh, snuggling um, and hugging and all those kinds of things. But the Bible says it's due benevolence. And so whoever the translator was, they made it what they wanted it to be. But the Bible says, listen, we come together because there needs to be a mutual level of grace for us. Wow. A mutual level of grace. and un Who would have thunk it? In a marriage relationship, a mutual level of grace? When it talks about the wife hath not power of her own body, all the men said, Amen. And then likewise, the husband hath not power of his own body. See, if we tuck it in just, just, just the physical body, and it is that when you break it down into the Greek, but it's talking about, you know, the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. They're talking about the needs for the man and the woman, but they're talking about each of them need to connect, but they need to connect in their own way, and there needs to be another level of grace, it's on your screen, of grace, that accommodates for that or allows for that. Amen, somebody. This is a good thing. And so the wife needs to be respected and the husband needs to be respected. And when they attempt to come together, it's for connection. It's not for some, in a Christian godly home, it's not for my needs dominating your needs. It is for my needs, but I need to connect with you so that my needs are met. And that goes both ways. Oh, amen and amen. Glory be to God. Uh, then it says, defraud ye not one another, lest it be with consent for a time that you give yourself to prayer and fasting. You know what he's saying this? Is this relationship is holy. Amen. And every aspect of it is holy. Glory be to God. That's a whole different sermon. And uh, I'm not uh, where I need to be in this part of the lesson. But let me say this. This expression of respect is huge because what if I have a goal tonight is that each of you, men and women, are respected at a higher level, respected for how you feel, respected for what you need, respected in it. And and this expression of respect, it, it is it's granting an innate value. Um, we can start here with with granting that what you have need of, I respect because it came with you, came with the package. And respect is critical for connection. I'm talking about respect, but I'm talking love and respect. C respect is critical, but um, men often try to connect in ways that are perceived as disrespectful, and women try to connect in ways that per are perceived as disrespectful, and nobody's laughing but the devil. And the examples that we have here are that we have been using tonight, and I've got so many more. I've got them written over here. Um, uh, women try to downplay his commitment to his work um, and feel um, that he is disrespected when uh, she's simply, simply, she just wants to be closer to him.
But what, and when she found the problem, you work too much. Or you golf too much. Boy, when I talk to women and um, they call themselves golf widows, golf is the problem. He spends too much money on her. <laughs> he spends too much time with her. Golf. I'm talking about golf right now. You say, well, Pastor, how can we get out of this? Lord, I'm glad you asked. Um, there, there are some examples. Um, we have to keep doing what's necessary to build the relationship, even when we can't see how it works. I remember uh, taking calculus at, in, in school, and um, calculus, when I first got in there, it just, you got to work it. You just got to work it. And Professor Kahnhauser, he, he kept saying, he said, just keep doing the problems or just doing the examples and it's going to click and so I'm gonna um, I'm gonna suggest some things tonight um, and then we're going to move forward but I'm just gonna say just keep doing the examples just keep respecting just keep having grace just understand that your wife is not trying to tear you down or tear down what you do for a living. She wants to connect with you and it looks like your focus has her focused out. And so she's attacking what it looked like the problem with. That's, a, that's an, I know it's, it's, it's hard for the man to see it this way. She's saying, I love you. And when a man comes to you, and he just wants to, he wants to be intimate with you and say, uh, is now a good time? <laughs> Listen, I ask you if we were grown. He's not trying to disrespect all of the hard work and the things that you've done over the course of the day. He is not simply clueless. He's trying to connect in the way that he connects. It just didn't translate because no one had this conference before they got married. Uh, that was just a plug for the conference. Amen. So. Disrespect is often felt where love and connection is trying to be communicated. And so it, 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 it's a big deal. So um, when we get past this, let me, get, let me give you to some of the, so let me give you some answers here. Part of the grace that I'm talking about is the grace that says whatever my spouse is doing my intended is doing my friend of the opposite sex is doing they're doing it for a reason whether I understand the fullness of it or not they're doing it for a reason I'm not going to count them as stupid or that activity is stupid. Why do they, why would they ever do that? And so I'm going to take a step off of my high horse for just a moment. And I'm going to say what they're doing is important to them. And how they are responding is important to them. And just maybe I'll become curious about why it is they do what they do. For example, um, for men, what do you get out of golfing? Okay, not golfing. Fishing. Okay, not fishing. What do you get out of playing video games? What do you get out of that? And, and for a woman, listen, if you talk about a time waster, a money waster, uh, that and, and not all women think that way about it. I'm just you, this is an illustration. Give me a break. This is an illustration. Well, what does he get out of it? Well, number one, let me talk about the video game generation. And boy, and I can talk about this for a minute. What is it in a video game that would make grown men act like boys? Women say, but that she he's what. This, a woman be, is not connected the way he's connected. See, he's just immature. He's just immature. He needs to, he needs to grow out of it. But, but what if there's something in the game that touches something 
on the inside of him other than beating the next monster. Let me tell you what's in a video game. Are you ready? They take you to a place of fantasy and imagination. In the place of fantasy and imagination, I can fight and not get hurt. I can score points. I can win if I'm diligent. If I apply more focus, that's why a man who is uh, playing a video game and he come against and he's fighting something, and I'm not a video game guy, but I understand what's in there. He's fighting something and he dies in the game. He will go back again and again and again, applying what? More focus. More focus. And if she's sitting there watching, why does he keep going into that room where he keeps dying? Because it engages how he has been designed to succeed. That if I focus on something long enough and hard enough, I can succeed. Glory be to God. When she sees it like that, she might not need that outlet to focus, to fantasize, and to succeed. But she gets it. She gets it. So there is a grace for the game. For her. He, she does some things that he could care less about. And um, when, when she's in there doing her thing, um, somebody can say, well, what she's in there doing? <sighs> Brother, there she goes. And, and he has this sense of, well, as long as she's over there and she's happy, I'm happy. Do you care what she's doing? Nope. Don't care what she's doing. But what if what she was doing had value? What if it was meeting some need in her that I was unaware of because I was detached? Because when she's doing that, I get to do this. What, what if it's like that? And if I want to create an environment, I told you we're going to give you some help, right? If I want to create an environment, then I become more of a marital partner or a partner in the relationship. And I can then become connective in the thing that they do outside of my space. So when she comes out of the room or comes home from what she was doing and I ask her with genuine interest, well, what were you doing? I'm not being nosy. I'm genuinely interested in how that book club meant, what is it, what do you get, what, what, are, you, what are you reading, number one? Okay, well, what do you get out of the book club? And genuinely, not questioning her to kind of limit her or put her in a box or anything, but everybody wants to be respected for what they do. And when I have grace that what they do is not necessarily what I need to do, and I embrace it to the degree that I am listening to you and I am interested into you, interested in what you do, guess what we find ourselves at? Are you ready for this? connection. <laughs> we find connection. Uh, if you listen to what men talk about, what, uh, what they get from the golf game or what they get from fishing, when they get from fill in the blank with what it is, it, it's, it's way more than what it looks like on the surface. And when people report uh, the value that they get from an activity, they are, they're, they're filled up by it. And how long it lasts and, and it, how, how, you know, the, I'm telling we've been designed to connect. And we connect in different ways. And sometimes, you know, um, you, if you spend time connecting in that way, you'll find more time for uh, the connecting in the way that you desire to connect. Uh, uh, women, uh, we have called them nurturers, and they are. They're nurturers. Uh, and they... Um, they have their own version of a golf game, something that they engage in that restores them, that gives them challenge and obstacle and gives them opportunity to engage in something that puts them in a place of wholeness and purpose. Um, it could be whatever it is for her. And so the men, if you want to connect to her uh, in a way, uh, in her, you want to connect to her in her way. Say amen, ladies. He needs to connect to you in your way and saying, you know, why, why do you spend so much time on doing that, which is a criticism, when you see her after that activity, again, genuine interest. Now she gets to express to you who she is 
and what she gets out of it, even if it's whatever, whatever. I don't I want to, whatever. And, and now you come home and you are curious and interested in her? I'm trying to help. And you want to know? And she gets to share with you what she's really thinking about something that she knows that you normally have no interest in, but you're genuine in your concern? I'm talking about connecting. It matters, it matters a lot. And, and, and you know what she'll say? She'll say, that meant a lot to me. That meant a lot to me. I pulled it off on my wife's birthday. Say amen. I, I practice what I preach. And I took her some places that she knows I don't go, but that she loves. I'm just saying, and that, and, and, and I didn't do it for this, and I certainly, it wasn't an exercise. She's not my, my guinea pig for these classes. But she told me, she said, you know, that meant a lot to me. You know what I did? I connected her way, her way. What'd you do, Pastor? I'll let her tell it if she wants to come on and tell it. But we, we connected. And so I'm saying that you sh I showed respect and you can show respect by um, interrupting where you are and what you would normally be doing uh, to find out something about her and spending time with her. If you get it right and you start with respect, whatever they're doing, I mean, shoot, I'm saying Whatever they're doing, they will drop for you. I'm talking about grace right now. I'm talking about love and respect, but respect is the foundation for all of it. If you consistently disrespect each other and then explain it away. Who's that talking? If you would please um, uh, mute. Amen, amen. Glory be to God. All right. Somebody needs to mute. I, I won't keep you too much longer. I, if perhaps you're becoming restless. Uh, glory be to God. I need to be aware of that. Um, let me get. Can 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 I just I know it's it's like nine oh four. We go to nine. I've been letting you out at nine o'clock. Can I just add one element of the practical to this? Um, I, I need to get this in so that tomorrow makes sense. All right. So if if you have a sheet of paper or you're keeping notes, I want you to do this for me. And we're going to go through this very briefly. We're going to start off here uh, when we get back on tomorrow. And um, we're going to really uh, get in uh, and develop this area. You have a sheet of paper. I want you to have three columns, please. At the top of, of one column, you put in the goal. At the top of the second column, you put in feelings slash belief. And in the top of the third column, you put in your behavior. And so what I am doing here is I'm trying to pull all of this together and say, whatever my feelings and beliefs are, they've got to align themselves with the goal. And whatever my behavior is, it needs to align itself with the feelings and belief and the goal. And that's the only way that I am moving in a positive direction. Are you with me? So let me give you some examples and, and we'll, we'll work through this very minimally. I'm going to introduce it. I think the natives are getting restless. Glory be to God. But if the goal, you got your columns? If the goal is to be responsible, I know you are responsible. Work with me. This is an illustration. If the goal is to be responsible, then the feeling or belief is, I am responsible for my own behavior, and our marriage can be satisfying. Now understand, the goal is to be responsible, and that's for the man and the woman. Everybody has their own chart. And my feeling or belief that I am responsible, so I'm going to be responsible for being responsible for my behavior, and our marriage can be satisfying. You might want to write that at the top of the page. Our marriage can be satisfying. Or if you're newlyweds, our marriage will be satisfying. Glory be to God. I'm not talking about longevity, Ron. I'm talking about quality. Not just longevity, but quality. And then in the third column, my behavior. And so my behavior is, third column, 
It accepts responsibility for marital problems and volunteers to help my partner. I accept the responsibility for the, for the challenges in the relationship and then I volunteer to help. But that's a long way from, for many time, for many couples, that's a long way from standard procedure. Let me give you one more and then we're going to open for questions and then we're out. If my goal is to contribute to the relationship, my goal is to contribute, my feeling and belief is I can belong by contributing and I feel adequate and loved by my partner. Listen, we might be calling things as be, that be not as though they were, but I belong, I can belong by contributing and I feel adequate and loved by my partner. Then, and the behavior then becomes I communicate honestly and I do my own work and I initiate social and intimate activity and I show self-discipline throughout every area of our relationship. Remember, the goal is to contribute. And so I believe that I can contribute and, and be a, a good partner. And my behavior, I communicate honestly. Communicate honestly means I'm not telling little half pieces of information over here and over there to manipulate the situation to my advantage. I do my work. I do what I'm responsible for. I'm helping. And I also uh, initiate social and intimate activity that becomes a part of who we are, becomes a part of connecting. And so what I'm trying to get to here, and this will pick up here on next time, is that my beliefs and my behavior have to be congruent with my goal. Because there are times when I have a goal, but I don't believe it can happen, and my behavior is a long way from fulfilling the goal. And people have operated in that atmosphere for far too long in far too many scenarios um, and produced some crazy situations. And nobody's laughing but the devil. Let me give you one more so that this kind of kind of gets in you. The goal is to cooperate. The feeling and belief is I am more interested in cooperating with my partner than getting even or winning. I am more interested in cooperating than I am in getting even or winning. But that, that, that doesn't even sound right, does it? <laughs> is that Christian, Pastor? You better believe it's Christian. So then here comes the behavior. I return kindness for hurt. I'm not talking about getting used because we're both doing this. Um, I ignore hurts and ask myself, what can I do to improve the situation? All the while accepting imperfections. Now, on the surface, I know that that looks like it is putting you in a position to be taken advantage of. But let me tell you what that is a position of power. It's a position of power. It is, what do you call it? It is um, um, counterintuitive. This behavior doesn't sound as if it serves cooperation. However, it does serve cooperation. What I've been doing does not, and that's why we have none. Oh, we have a limited, or it's, it's a little bit. Hey, listen, we'll pick up there when we get back next week, but I don't, want to, um, I don't want to leave without answering questions. So if you would, um, I'll stay as long as you have questions. Uh, it can, let it be about relationship, hopefully, but if it's something about a, uh, um, that's really important to you today, um, remember, um, please uh, register for tomorrow. I think it'll be a real blessing to you. We got some, we're going to finish the discussion on Valentine's Day uh, tomorrow. We're also going to get deeper into how can I align my thinking and my behavior up with my goal so that we can get to the finish line together. Glory be to God.
Okay, for you repeat. Can I repeat the second part of the goal? Uh, can I repeat the second part of goals and feelings? I'm not certain I understand the question. Type more. The second part. You mean to contribute? Um, the second example. Um, the second example was uh, communicate honestly. Uh, the, the second goal or illustration, contribute. I can belong by contributing. I feel adequate and loved by my partner. The third was the behavior. Communicate honestly and does my own work. Initiate social and sexual activity and show self-discipline. Is that what we're asking? Okay. Amen. Amen. We, we, we're in tune in the spirit. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Yeah. So the goals were to res be responsible, to contribute, to co cooperate. And the third is to encourage. Everybody needs an encourager. We've been designed like that. We, we keep going back to that design. You can't escape that. We're going back. I've been, I need to be encouraged, not criticized and put down. I need to be encouraged. And so to the degree that my, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll, we'll pick up there next, next time. Glory be to God. Any other questions, folks? You got me. You got me. Amen. Amen. Okay. Well, well. Okay, okay, wait, I'm thinking the Lord is telling me to go ahead and give you this third illustration because um, tomorrow I, I, I can pick up here and it'll be if I give you this. So the third, we got our column, the goal, the feeling or belief, and then the behavior. The fourth illustration uh, toward positive relationship is to encourage. And so the goal is to encourage. And the feeling or belief is I feel like... I feel liked and treated fairly. That's, my, that's how I feel. Now, I'm calling things that be not as though they were. Maybe I, I feel liked and treated, tra treated fairly. I do not need to fight and tear my partner down. I choose to build my partner up. Amen. I'll read that again because some of you are writing as fast as you can. The goal is to encourage. The feeling or belief is, I feel liked and treated fairly. I do not need to fight and tear down my partner. I choose to build my partner up. That's a choice. That's a feeling. That's a belief. I believe that. I, I believe it. And so the behavior is this. I see my partner's assets more often than I see their weaknesses. I encourage my partner and I listen to my partner. I'll read that one more time. I see my partner's assets more often than their weaknesses. I encourage my partner. I listen to my partner. I want to add and believe him. Glory be to God. And so we will um, we'll pick up there uh, when we get back on um, tomorrow, kind of, because I, I, I can see that we only have two more days left. And folks, I'm trying to squeeze this information into this nutshell. That's why we're creating a university, um, so that we can have the, the lessons can go on and be segmented and be a blessing uh, as people would have access. Amen. Let's see, what do you recommend as a maintenance after Friday? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I'm glad you asked. Um, one of the things that uh, I am writing, I'm going to give you the first glimpse of. Um, and uh, we're going to give you access to the first glimpse of 21 Days to a Better Marriage. Um, this is for married couples. I don't have 21 Days to a Better Courtship written yet. Maybe I need to start on it uh, tonight. But we're going to give you access to this is the um, raw book in action. So we're going to give you the, maybe the first five days. Amen. And uh, we're going to be uh, led of the Lord. We will be announcing um, on uh, uh, Thursday and Friday uh, and, you know, giving, sending emails to the other people um, that we have planned a, another conference for April. Um, different topics and whatnot. Um, but I, I have to get this stuff out, folks, and I hope it'll be a blessing to you. So um, there's more coming down the pipeline. This is not just a flash in the pan. Uh, I hope you're being blessed. And um, to that particular question, uh, what, are we, what are we doing for maintenance? 
tomorrow, because of where I'm headed in this lesson, um, what you're going to find is maintenance built in. Because some people, um, and this may maybe not be for the questioner, is we're not ready for maintenance. Because maintenance would mean to simply manage what we have, and that is not acceptable. What we're ready for is restoration and a pathway to blessings and increase. Um, we can get to maintenance, but for many of us, because we've not understood that we've been wired differently, we've not understood what that means when a pastor or somebody says we've been wired differently and how it impacts our everyday lives and our everyday outlook. And when we're coming to this knowledge, and that's why I'm trying to give you illustration after illustration, and I hope that's working, because for what the Lord has shown me, it's hard to describe with, unless I just give you the illustrations. Uh, I've tried. I've tried to write it down, but I just keep writing down illustrations. And, and so that's my method. I hope it is effective uh, as I am talking to you and it is blessing you. Amen. 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 Glory be to God. Amen. All right. Glory be to God. Listen, um, um, I want to pray for you. And um, again, uh, I encourage everybody to um, uh, find a way to be back in here on tomorrow. Um, if you want to pay the, the $50, that's fine. I'm trusting you for the, the, the balance of it. For what you've gotten, I mean, I, th I think it's a blessing. I think it's a blessing. And so um, I've done what the Lord has called me to do. Uh, but I hope to see all of you in the room tomorrow night. Glory be to God. Uh, be there. Be there. Be square. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And, and maybe by the end of uh, Friday, I'll have my wife make another cameo. I hope she she's listening. She's not in the room uh, with me right here, but she's listening. Amen. Make another cameo. And uh, but folks, I believe we've got some good stuff for you that you'll be blessed exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I'm just asking you right now to bless these families, bless these relationships, these men and these women that you are giving them another level of awareness, wisdom, and insight for their lives, for their homes, for their relationships, and for everything that counts. Father, that all of them are respected, respected, loved, and all of them find the connection that you have made available for them in this relationship that God has get, that you have given to them, Lord. Father, that they be the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. We call blessings, wisdom, and increase over the, all of the days of their life. In Jesus' holy name, amen, amen, amen. If you want to unmute yourself and say amen or good night or whatever you want to say, you're welcome to do that. I'll let the, uh, I'll, I'll let the, uh, the event roll for just a moment. Let somebody know you're there. Might want to say good night. I see some faces. I've got it on the. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good to see you.